Valentine's Day. My favorite holiday <laughs> of the year. We don't celebrate Valentine's Day. It, it's so stupid and I hate it. Yay Networks. Hey guys, episode 32. We are, we just got done recording a bonus episode for you all. I hope y'all like that bonus episode. That was our second one. Uh, excuse my face today. I have a lot of spotting. I went and got a laser done. Speaking of our last episode, talking about tanning beds, um, I'm removing all the sun damage I did from back when. From your tanning bed days? Yeah, look at, so y'all see my face? It's all spotty. And you know what you don't realize? When uh, Christina, that does my laser, she told me, she was like, you know, you can see your sun damage on the left side of your face from the car, from driving. Oh, really? And then your hands. And all today, because she was telling me about my hands, I'm starting to get age, like, age spots on my hands. And... uh or brown spots, whatever you want to say. Am I old enough for age spots? Uh, yeah. She said from driving, too. Your hand. And then people wear gloves. Like, if you're serious, you wear gloves when you drive. There's s- gloves to protect your hands. Wow. When you're driving. That's a little much. Yeah. But all today, I was driving like this with my hands. I felt like the wet bandits from Home Alone. <laughs> this, <laughs> I this- did. But, um, yeah, so I got that done, and then, um, yeah. What? That was a great, that was exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And then. <laughs> you love that stuff. What? Oh, lasers? Yeah. Yeah, of course. It makes you feel better. It makes your skin look good. It makes you look younger. But you always get it, and then you complain. You're like, man, I got all these spots. No. And you're like, but one day I'll look beautiful no it gets rid of them and that's why i do because every year you get a new eye the way my skin is you get a new batch of sunspots and then it goes away and i have melasma which my melasma has lightened up so much it used to be horrible and i used to have like the mustache and like the patches and just from doing lasers it's it's really tamed but then why in the summertime do you just sit out there for hours on end and get like your skin like leather and then all winter you laser it i don't do that you don't sit outside i go outside because it's good for you it's good for your mental health but isn't it and i go outside and i do my yard work and i will put a spray sunscreen on what do you want me to do because it's summertime i have to sit no i'm just saying isn't that what causes the spots Probably, but m- some people are more prone to freckle. Like me, because I'm blonde hair, fair skin, light eyes, I'm more prone to freckle. You are not prone to freckle as much because your skin is way different. Than but mine. I get it. I don't, what I'm saying is if I was going to get lasers and have my face burnt off by lasers, I don't know if that I would be in the sun as much during the summertime if I know I got to get my skin lasered in the winter time. Well... The kids want to be outside. I like being outside. No, I, so <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to win this argument. Yeah, no, you're not. You're definitely not going to. I love summertime. It's my favorite. I love spring. I'm just like my mom. When I lived in North Carolina with the humidity, we would just sit out there in the sun and just sweat. And I love that. It's my favorite. And you are, you're just so opposite from me. I like being outside. What are you talking about? You don't about? like, you're not like me though. You're but not if like I was going to get surgery on my skin to make it look better, I wouldn't be out fishing with my shirt off is what I'm saying. That's oh. all. Well, you can't help it. All right. All right. You win. Do it up. Okay. Soak up the sun. So yesterday we're taking the kids to Mexico and this summer and we... <laughs> Yesterday, I was like, okay, I'm getting ahead of this. Uh, We're going to get the kids' passports. I got Layton's photo done while Lawson was in school. And then uh, I told Jeff, I said, because we have to both be there at the passport place, um, I guess, to sign stuff together. So I go, let's get Lawson right after school, and we will go to the uh, get Lawson's photo and go to the passport place. So... Um, I tell Jeff, I leave the house to go get Lawson. Jeff is eating. And I'm like, whenever I pull up, be ready. And he's like, okay. 
So he comes out. I pull, I get Lawson. I pull up at the house, tell Jeff to come out, him and Leighton come out. And then I'm backing out of that driveway because he's like, oh, we're going to forget something. I go, where, where are the birth certificates? Where's everything? Oh, they're inside. And you forgot those. Okay. Do you guys feel as an audience a fight coming? Because you no, should. I text You're not my... even telling the story right. But I'll let you tell your version. Okay. And then I'll tell mine. So I'm. we go to Walgreens to get Lawson's photo done. <laughs> we get his photo done. And then um, after that, Jeff realizes he forgets his checkbook, which you can only... Um, what is it? You, you, you can't, you can't pay with a card. It's cash. A cashier's some check pla- or... Some places are cash, depending on where you go. But where we're going, you can only, <clears throat> um, have a money order. A money order or a check. That's or a right. Check. That's right. Not a cashier's check. So we go to the post office and it's, the thing's closed. And I made the mistake I swung by the post office when I was getting Layton's photo done, and I saw it said walk-ins from 8 to 8.45. It didn't say a.m., p.m., anything. I just assumed it was... Now Jordan's plugging in some more of the story that she didn't tell the first time. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying. Oh, no, let let me talk. I am. So it's... I just assumed that. Wouldn't you assume that? No. Okay, I assume that because I'm like, why would it just be 45 minutes for a walk-in? It has to be open for everybody for walk-ins. But I knew you could make an appointment. No, I was just more aggravated at you because I felt like out of spite, you were forgetting stuff on purpose because you were just annoyed with me. You think I wanted to waste my time driving around I just felt like you were doing it out of spite. Okay, let me tell you my version of what happened, okay? I was at work by the way. And I go, Hey, if you're getting lost in, if you're getting Layton's passport across the street from the post office, because I went online and I filled out all the paperwork and I did everything necessary to get the passports. I go, why don't you pop in the post office? I stood right there beside you to make sure you didn't mess up. I go, why don't you pop in the post office and figure out what we need so when I come back, when we get Lawson's photo, we have everything. Talk to the lady there because she was there and figure out what it is. This is me driving home. Okay, I got it. No problem. I get home. What did the lady say? I don't know. There's two people in front of me, so I left. She was helping somebody, okay. and I wasn't going to walk up and be in the middle of what she's doing because you know people at the DMV post office type things, when you interrupt them, they get rude with you. So I wasn't going to interrupt her. So you and- left? No, I wasn't going to interrupt her and be like, hey, excuse me, can well, you- then wait two minutes. Jeff, she was in the middle of processing this couple's passport, and there was a guy right behind them on the phone, and I wasn't going to just walk in and somebody be like, what's this girl doing? She just walked in here. She's just going to walk in front of us and be like, excuse me. All the information was there, and I saw that with the walk-ins, and like I said, that was my fault that I assumed it was open from 8 to 8.45 p.m. That is my fault that I assumed. So let me get back to my version of the story. So I get home and I go, so you didn't talk to anybody at the post office. Okay, that's fine. I don't, I don't know why you didn't, but I guess some people think like that. Okay, I wouldn't have done that. I would have got some information before I left the post office. So we go to get lost and we're going to get a picture. Jordan put everything in one envelope while I was gone, she, which is smart, right? She put the picture in there, all of our paperwork, everything in there. And I get in the car where she yelled at me because she put everything into an envelope and she's like, where's all the paperwork? And I go, I don't know. You, I thought you had it. You, I just got back from work. You were the one out figuring out what to do with this. So why would you assume that I had it? What are you talking about? In the car? Yeah. You said I, I spite I spitefully forgot it. Oh, because I left you here with Layton so you could eat in peace while I go get Lawson so you didn't have to rush to eat. And I left it there because I didn't need to bring it with me. And I said, I'm going to pick you up, be ready, come out. So I assume you would just grab it on your way out. Well, listen, there was some miscommunication. Anyways, long story short, we went to go get Lawson's photo. We forgot the checkbook. I forgot the checkbook. Had to come all the way back. Then we go all the way to post office. It's all shut down. And uh, long story short, our meeting now is at the end of 
February or is it March. at the end of March? March. And we're leaving in July, which is cutting it close. Yeah. And, but I don't think you can expedite it unless you show proof of traveling within like two weeks, something like that. Right, right, That's right. the only way. But then we expedited our passport. I think it, all you do is pay and you could get it expedited because it's already like a hundred, it's like $400 to get passports for the kids. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And they have to get them every five years. That's re- I mean, it's because ridiculous. It changes. What's the, so we better start booking international trips while. I don't while understand why this. it's so much. I guess everything's so much money, but that's crazy. I went, crazy. speaking of so much money, I went um, to McDonald's, not McDonald's. I went to this uh, coffee place I like. It's not Starbucks, uh, Black Rock Coffee. It's good. And I got an iced coffee with oat milk. That's it, an iced coffee. And it was $7. And you only got half of that coffee because it was iced. Yeah. I was like, how is this $7? I don't know. It's just weird. Gas has gone down, though. I don't know. It cost me like $60 to fill up my car, and now it's like 38 Yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. Let's go. <laughs> it's because the election. Yeah. That's they're trying why. to make it seem like the economy is great. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick little break. Uh, we'll kiss and make up and try to tell some funny stories. Welcome back. We're going to switch gears. We're going to be nicer to each other. Um, (laughs) We are going to talk about the Grammys. And we're going to, we're going to bitch about other people, except, (laughs) except us. We'll bitch about each other off camera. Not. I think we had enough. That was good. That was good. I feel better about the passports now. Yeah. Okay. You want to talk a little pop culture? You want to talk a little Grammys? Okay. I have to say. Well, talking about like, out, well, I'm no fashionista, but Miley Cyrus, that hair yeah. was crazy. I know she's a performer. She has a amazing voice. I did not like her performance, but everybody's everybody was raving about it. What's wrong with me? Why did I think it was off? I didn't like it. I didn't like, she looked great, right? She has a good body. Yeah, she looked great. But I think for me, it was, again, we're going back. This is like two weeks ago. You know, we're going back in time a little bit. The Super Bowl has passed. We'll get to there a little bit. But uh, Miley Cyrus's performance, I don't. it was just a little like you were, like it looked like someone was dressed up like Miley Cyrus at like a karaoke contest <laughs> trying to win. That's what it looked like see. to me. She was trying way too hard, and then at the end, it got like, to, like rock star. Her image? And then she threw the mic down, like she was like Billy Idol, like or Billy Eilish. Is that no. what you mean? Oh, Billy Idol. Billy Idol. Isn't oh. that Billy Idol? Yeah, the eighties guy. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like Billy Eilish because she was there. No, I thought, no, 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 no. That's what I thought you meant. Um, yeah, I wasn't into it. I mean, she's so talented. And then <laughs> I'm gonna get killed for saying this, but. I cannot stand Taylor Swift, every single person. She stands up for everybody and cheers for everybody and dancing. And I know everybody loves her. And even my kids love her. They love her music. They always ask in the car for me to turn on Taylor Swift songs. And that might be another reason why, because I'm like Taylor Swift out. And every time I get in the car, the radio, I swear to you, in the mornings, Everything they're talking about, probably because the Super Bowl's coming. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. And I can't, uh, I, I can't stand her. <laughs> I think maybe because it's overexposure. She's super, listen. She's so she's talented. She's super talented, right? She's overexposed. And with this Travis Kelsey thing, she's going in, you know, that's like kind of going into a different lane, right? So a lot of people who just want to watch football are tired of it because there's too much Taylor Swift. It Listen, it doesn't ruin my day because Taylor Swift that is at the Chiefs game or at the Super Bowl. But what I'm wondering now is this being the Wednesday after the Super Bowl, right? Because we're filming this a little bit early. Will that talk die down? Because we do it at work and we do it every day. So if somebody Oh, y'all do Taylor Swift every stories? day, every day. Because I do. A lot of people don't see it. You know, if you watch our main show or whatever, you know, and you're in Denver area, wherever you get the show, I host a different show, an entertainment show that only airs in a couple cities. And on that show, we talk every day, 
Every single day we do a Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey story. Oh, yeah. So I'm wondering if that will die down um, once now the football's over, I right? And the Grammys are done and football's done. Is this story of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey going to continue? Where are they going to show up that they're going to get so much media attention? So I hope it dies down a little I think bit. she's... I think she's going on a tour. One of my friends who's obsessed she's with her. She's on tour. I think she's like going out of the country though tour. Yeah, she's in Japan. Well, she was oh. or something when the Super Bowl was happening. Then you see like the whole <laughs> timeline of her going back in time because Japan is ahead of time. If she gets on a flight, <laughs> she could make it. No. Katie Couric broke it all down like on the oh, really? Today Show. Yeah, it was like this see, whole See, shows chart. how much I pay attention. Oh, to her. it's yeah. So you're sick of it, and you don't even pay attention. I have to live it every day. So yeah. again, if anyone should be mad, it's me, and I'm not that mad. Like no. Scotty, one of our buddies, texts me, <laughs> and he's like, "Could you?" I, I'm over this Taylor Swift stuff, man. And I was <laughs> he's like, "Older too." And you know, I was working out, kids. and I was like, "Buddy, don't let it ruin your day." It's like they flashed to her for two seconds. It's not a big deal. Like, I think it's just because her is it the heiress tour did so well and then right after her tour then she started with the kelsey guy and then football started and just like the whole thing but like i said she's super talented i just i'm over it yeah and you're right on the standing up and pretending you know every song and you're so enthusiastic so for, for every single winner stop it yeah. yeah stop it that's my thing there is if i was there i'd be like oh what a nerd right yeah for there's sure there's a montage of her somebody made of videos for her the whole time she's just standing up clapping yay no that's what i don't like yeah. her as a person whatever i that's fine the travis kelsey thing i don't hate it or anything that's beautiful like I said, the standing up and singing and clapping for everybody. Nobody's that happy. Right. Come on, Taylor. And then I I feel old because Jeff, he's got to watch it for his show uh, or for work. But the red watch carpet, what? you got to watch the Grammys for your work so you oh. know what to talk about. So, <laughs> I thought you meant like I got to watch it. Oh, like no. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, that too, probably. Uh, the red carpet when everybody's walking. I kept asking Jeff, I go, who's that person? Who's that person? You're like, I have no idea. Who's that performer? I don't know anybody. You know what? This whole, I don't, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know a lot of people either. And I, and I'm supposed to know all the, a lot of those people, but I just don't, you know, I'm older and a lot of those singers or whatever musicians are younger. I just don't know who they are. It being finishing up award season, we got the Oscars coming up and stuff. Are the Oscars The Oscars next? are coming. Oh. Yeah, the Oscars are next. How many award shows? That's what I'm saying. I'm kind of, you know what? Again, we're talking about this today a little bit because we were talking about Super Bowl commercials. And again, this didn't happen yet, so we haven't seen all of them. But I've seen most of them, right? Because they're advertising it. I'm over like the whole, the the overhype of celebrities. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like instead of being creative, like as writers or directors and making a funny commercial and you know, you could just put anybody in there and make it a just good. You remember that Doritos commercial back in the day where you had the time machine and the guy was going in there with the old guy and he's like, oh my God, you're so old. It was like a funny Doritos commercial. Oh, no. And they'd have like contests, Doritos would, for regular people just to pitch their commercials. And the best one- Really? Would, I think it was Doritos that did that, okay. right? And the best one. So there's a lot of creative people out there. And there's a lot of creative writers out there. And I feel like Hollywood went so in one direction. Not that they're not talented people out there. I'm not saying that. But it's like, it's so- easy and low-hanging fruit just to be like let's throw arnold schwarzenegger in here and say get out of the choppa you know it's oh, like yeah. that's how creative you are or let's reboot this show and just make it a diverse cast and pat ourselves on the back it's like what that's not you're not creating anything you're recreating an old idea and you're not creating anything new like the creativity is is gone and i think it's in i know super bowl commercials are you know, famous for having celebrities in there and stuff. But the amount of money they pay them just to put them in the commercial with no creativity and the in the over support of what they do and the gratification of like patting each other on the back all the time. And they're in, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little jealous or jaded. I don't know which one, but I, I'm kind of, I'm over the celebrity aspect of things. There's certain celebrities I like, but I don't know. I did, think you're more jaded. Did I go on a weird rant there? No. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you're more jaded. Yeah, I think so. I was happy. I like people now, you know, 
It's like once it's just like our time, uh, Britney Spears. You know how she was just like the pop queen, and she's kind of like the Taylor Swift. You know, uh, Britney Spears was just so popular; everybody knew her globally. And then Taylor Swift is like that now, like right. a younger version of that, like the pop. And she considered pop. I would consider her a pop yeah. singer. And I don't know. I just feel like once you get to a certain point of celebrity, just like Justin Bieber, it almost gets too weird. And then I always like going back to the people like Lainey Wilson one. If you don't know, she's a country singer. And she gave her speech. She's from Louisiana, small town. She said farmer's daughter. She said in a town with like 200 people. And then she won a Grammy. Like that's what I get excited about. I got teary eyed. I don't ever care about that stuff. And I got teary eyed because I'm like, here she is. There's 200 people in her uh, town and she's on stage winning a Grammy. Like, what are the chances somebody would have thought that would have happened? And she probably was, you know, fighting for her dreams. And I feel like she just keeps blowing up. People like that, I, I lo- I'm I, like, oh, win, you win, you know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like that too. Once celebrities are celebrated so much, I kind of get over when that. they're praised like a god yeah it's an, uh, that's when i get turned and just off. their appearance i should be happy that they came yeah. but i don't need to know every detail so like you mentioned like country music look at dolly parton right right her husband she's been with for what like 50 years i don't even know a and no time. one even knows what that guy looks like yeah he doesn't come around and i love that me too that's like the listen old hollywood wasn't great especially after watching those marilyn monroe documentaries what she went so through and sad, stuff like that yeah. but it so this is kind of a bad example because that was covered up. But if you haven't seen the Marilyn Monroe documentaries, you she went through cry. a lot of stuff and what directors did with casting couches in the old days. It's all true. It's all real. And like that poor girl had to do some terrible, terrible things. things. Yeah. But the glitz and glamour again, outside that of what Hollywood once was, we didn't know the problems, almost ignorant is bliss type of thing. You didn't know about what was behind the doors with these celebrities. And I like that. I guess exposing that, the, the time we live in now, that's a good thing, that you expose the sexism and racism and all that other stuff. We have a lot of things that we need to fix and iron out. But I don't need to know every single detail of your whole life and things that happened, you mentioned Britney Spears, 30 years ago that you made out with Ben Affleck that just came out now. You don't need to tell every single thing. There's other families and kids and lives involved just to try to sell a book. And not Britney Spears, I'm using that as a example for everybody it's just like enough i don't need to know every detail about you like as we memoir. as we're doing a podcast telling all of our details about ourselves but we're nobodies we're <laughs> not know. like i know I just we're not it. like famous people we're just two idiots talking sh- sharing our opinion but we're talking about like actual celebrities yeah but it's just like you're constantly celebrated and uh I don't know. Just there's too many award shows. The, the exposure, it's overexposure. And then when you don't buy into it, like Ben Affleck, then uh, then you get memes about you. This guy doesn't care about the. It's like, yeah, dude. Everyone's got an opinion about everything, and it turns into something that it never even originally started as. It just takes a life of his own into something else. I the other day felt so sad because I saw Toby Keith had died. Oh yeah, and he. I, I actually watched on Instagram, it was a video, I think one of his last interviews with somebody, and he just looked so frail, and it looked like his cancer had taken over, but what made me feel sad was, uh, and my girlfriend from home sent me this, she goes, I just saw he had died, she goes, it's so sad, because he was like the old school, 90s guy, had a ton of money, but didn't let it get to his head, opened up bars, did well for himself, but was like a true, um, he was just all, he was just the true definition of like American. He loved our troops. He supported our troops. When 9-11 happened, he came out with um, a courtesy of the red, white, and blue. You know that song? Yeah, yeah. I love that part when he's like, we put a boot in your ass. And then all like the troops start like cheering and they're away from their families. And it's just like, and then he came out with this song, American Soldier. And then was, um, he was singing uh, the song and brought this soldier's wife up and then surprised her 
on stage, like just he's very patriotic. Yeah. And I'm like, he like he's a good one and he's gone and he you didn't see him in the media you didn't see him in the news you knew what he stood for he made his music he wrote and he just stayed out of all of that and like i said he was old school country i just like that he anybody that supports our troops and people fighting for our country like I love that using your celebrity status. And instead of talking about me, 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 he's like, look at these troops. And his father, I think, fought, you yeah. know? And um, I just like, it made me feel sad because he's 90s country and somebody like I a know, good and one. Young lost. and like the deterioration was yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. That was just sad. sad. It makes you, me sad. You know what? Well, should we take a break or let's take a quick little break and we'll come back and finish it up? Okay. All right, we're back. Um, Valentine's Day. My favorite holiday <laughs> of the year. We don't celebrate Valentine's Day. It, it's so stupid and I hate it. Like, it's, seriously, it's made up. And then people put on Instagram how much they love their girlfriend and boyfriend and husband <laughs> and wife. And look how perfect. Oh, my God. My whole house is covered in flowers. Get fucking real. <laughs> That's not real. That's not real life. What is... Do you have any good Valentine's Day stories? Like, tra like, not even, I'm not talking about romantic ones, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> one that maybe bombed. Did we do what? We, what did we do for Valentine's Day? Nothing. You, no, we did, I remember a cute one. Okay, I'll, I'll be nice I for meant, a second like, and have a heart. I like, tell a bomb one. A do you have, like, one from Oh, when like, you, where I tried to impress somebody? Yeah, like, when no, you're younger. I don't think so. I, I not that I remember. Maybe there is, but I don't remember. I was never a fan of, like, forced affection. I'm not a fan of that. I never had a boyfriend, really, so. <laughs> it's just, I, the whole idea me. of it is, like, you got to get something. You're not impressing the person you're with. You're impressing the people around them. Oh my God, look how great Jeff is. He got me this. You're not impressing the person. You're impressing their friends. This one right? year, I, Leighton, I want to say Leighton was just a baby. And it must have been your show talking about Valentine's Day. And it was like such a forced thing. And Jeff came home with flowers. And you seem so irritated that you brought home flowers. Like, oh, I had to buy this for Whatever. Valentine's listen, I'm Day. Not, listen, I, I am a jerk. I don't, but I'm not that big of a jerk. I'm not a Valentine's Day person. I don't care. Now, what I do love is uh, what gets me excited is I go to Target and I always buy these boxes, like Valentine's Day boxes, and I always put the kids' favorite candies in there and buy it. And I get so excited because I put them out in the morning before they wake up and they go crazy because they get like a box and it's like a little surprise and I always get them something cheap in there that they really like you know like a $10 Lawson loves video games so it might be $10 Roblox gift card and Layton um I don't know something with markers and they like that so that no that's gets, cute that's that cute. I like doing but for me you and I we don't get cards. Or, I think we used to do cards. Yeah, I remember. That's why I said I'm not that big of an asshole. I do remember one, and I could picture it too. You know, like you remember like by picture. It was our L.A. apartment, and you like cooked me dinner. You like cooked me like lasagna or something. And we ate at that little table. Remember in the corner of the kitchen? I, you know what I'm talking about? By, you know, Are you sure you're not mixing this up with your birthday? Oh, maybe. I think you're mixing this up with your birthday. I was when just I made trying to be you, nice that I remembered something. <laughs> <laughs> when I made you a chocolate eclair cake. Yeah. That's was your that birthday. It? Oh. That's your birthday. All right. Well, uh, back to Valentine's Day sucks. I don't remember anything. <laughs> you but, liar. Yeah, I was such a liar. I tried to be cool for a second. I'm not. Um, listen, we're going a little long. Speaking of forced affection, why don't, <laughs> why don't we say three nice things about each other since we started off Matt. fighting with each other? <laughs> But it's good, though. We got it out. Now we feel better. We'll end with some fake compliments, and we'll move on. Okay. Uh, no, don't fake it. Be real. What? You go first. Me go first? Three things that I like about you? <laughs> 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 I love playing this game. Um, you always have better answers. Three things I like about you. <laughs> 
I'm trying to think. Uh, oh my god! You're very forgiving. <laughs> Which you were, you'll forgive me for the first part of this podcast, right? Uh huh. There you go. Here we go. Your turn. Oh God! I wanted you on the spot. I just what do was. I, like um, your hand. You're a handyman. You'll do a project. Okay, that's a that's a. That's what I like about you. Would you write that in a Valentine's Day card? You're handy. <laughs> You're the man of my dreams, you handy man. <laughs> um, yeah, you're handy. All right. I don't want to give the same answers. All right. You're um you're very concerned about your skincare. <laughs> okay. You're um you're very motivated when it's something you like. Okay, that was a good one. Now I'll give a real one. You have to say the last no, one. No, I'm trying to get into like one word. You're very real, which I appreciate. You know that phony baloney stuff, like let's pretend and not. You, I don't have to do that with you. You're very real, and that's number one. That's why I love you. Okay. That was good. Uh, This one I feel like I give all the time. I always say... You don't change who you are because of who you're around. I, but I give that answer all the time. But it is true. It's one thing that I like you, that I liked about you, even though you can be an asshole. I, I like, <laughs> you know, my I favorite part that? is I like how you say things so enthusiastically. I guess that's why I like you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that was our Valentine's Day card that we shared with you guys. <laughs> um. Okay, that's it. Sorry, Jeff and I are a little feisty, but you know what? It happens when you're married and you're with your husband all the time. So, Jeff's going out. People make you drive back and forth from the post office, even though they've already been there, but didn't ask any questions. And then you got to go back, and they're closed. I hope every have a good Valentine's Day. (laughs) (laughs) We're out on that. Okay. Okay. I love you, love. Thank you. Love you. All right, guys. Make sure to tune in. I don't even know. How am I going to close this Like, out? tag a friend, download, subscribe. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking around with us. And um, Real quick, it is Valentine's Day, so we're going to show some love to you. Thank you so much for making this podcast what it is. It means so much to us. We never thought it was going to get here. I know Jordan gets back in the comments all the time and thanks all you guys. But we're in the top 50 for um, society and culture. Is that what it is? Yeah for podcasts and that's amazing you know that's something i didn't even think about when we started this podcast so being up there with other names uh of people that i know in podcasts that i know it's pretty cool so thank you guys for telling you know your friends and a lot of old friends of mine um you know it's a reason they could text me it keeps us in touch and they're like hey man just heard the podcast it was great me and my wife do the same thing or whatever so that's really cool it's cool. and um this podcast wouldn't be what it is without Michaela and Riley they're we make a good team and it wouldn't be what it is without these two we'll send them a valentine's day card <laughs> and we'll tell them how much we love them yeah <laughs> we'll fill it with a bunch of fake stuff yeah all right bye guys